So moving forward, uh, a couple of years later, I'm, I'm now a teenager. I'm using drugs. I'm stealing my mother's Xanax pills. Um, to I was numbing myself, and at times I would black, I would black out. But anyways, I, uh, I find myself praying every night for about a couple of months that God will let me wake up to a different family. Well, that never happened. Um, so I, I became angry. I and I turned my back on him. I turned my back on God. I was really young when I got introduced to Jesus. I was probably around, I was in kindergarten or, or in the first grade, so I was like five or six years old. But my mother and father got a divorce and shortly after that she got into a relationship with a man and he quickly moved in with us and uh, he later became my stepfather. But this man introduced our family to the Pentecostal church and to churches that are in the charismatic realm. Um, so I remember him sending us to church for the first time and it had to have been Easter Sunday because the Sunday school teacher was telling the crucifixion story and I remember her telling that story so well. She was, she was an awesome storyteller. She painted a picture in my mind that was just like, it was like no other. Anyways, um, I was crying. I, I couldn't hold back the tears. I just started crying and I was crying because this man was an innocent man and he died for, for everybody so that way they could be saved and go to heaven. And I just remember feeling so loved for what was done on the cross. Um, anyways, that Sunday I accepted Jesus in my heart and I became a child of God. So that's, so yeah, that's how that happened. Um, so the same man that introduced us to the church, to Jesus, um, he was the same man that sexually abused me. Not only did he sexually abuse me, but he also physically and mentally abused me as well. So at the same time I was experiencing good, I was experiencing evil. I had accepted Jesus in my heart and at the s same time he was dishing out his abuse on me but I I now know that this man was hiding he used God to hide behind what he really was but anyways um one in particular time that that I remember I um I was probably around 11 or 12 years old when this happened but I was being forced to do something sexually and I had a vision of Jesus being up on that he's he was up on the on the cross and he was looking at me and it was it only lasted about a couple of seconds but it was it was very vivid um I was young and I didn't know why I had that vision while sin was going on I thought it was I thought it was bizarre but now looking back I, I know that he was letting me know that he, he he was embracing me he was letting me know that he was right there during a very dark moment and through that vision I now know that I in fact did go through his mind while he was up on that cross but um, so moving forward uh, a couple of years later I'm I'm now a teenager I'm using drugs i'm stealing my mother's xanax pills um to i was numbing myself and at times i would black i would black out but anyways i um uh, i find myself praying every night for about a couple of months that god will let me wake up to a different family well that never happened um so i i became angry i and i turned my back on him i turned my back on god um, and that was the time that I started practicing Wicca and I practiced it for about a year or two but um, I knew that 
practicing the occult was basically leaving an open door to the demonic realm but I me doing that was directly linked to my anger with God and I was mad I was upset so I just I just dove into it um unknowingly a spirit became attached to me and so my family went to church every Sunday morning Sunday night Wednesday night um, and we even had Bible study at our home but I, I remember towards the end of my practicing the occult I I would get very irritable hearing the Word of God I would get angry and I just I didn't like hearing the Word of God I it was hearing the Word of God whether it was at church or at home it was like nails to a chalkboard I it, it was I didn't like it at when that was going on but um so one Sunday evening my mother and I we went to church and we went to a church that we normally don't attend to but for some reason we ended up going there but anyways we sat at the very back and I remember being uncomfortable I couldn't sit still and the preaching really got underneath my skin and before I knew it um, the elders of the church had approached me and they asked me if they could pray for me well I was being put on the spot so I, I said yes so they they laid their hands on me and they started praying and I saw people from the church coming to join in uh, with the prayer with praying for me and they put their they were putting their hands on the elders that had their hands on me so it was like a chain of prayer but before I knew it we ended up at the altar actually I don't even remember the process of approaching the altar but we ended up there um, so they kept praying and all of a sudden I felt this form of release I like something got lifted off of me um, and I knew that they felt it too because as soon as I felt that form of release they all started immediately after I felt that form of release they started praising and thanking God I I felt freed I was freed uh, from this entity that had attached itself to me I um, I remember crying and I remember this woman telling me thank God for what he's done so I did I raised my hands and I started praising him and thanking him um, so yeah that was the moment that I stopped practicing the occult repented of my sins uh, my repented of practicing that and came back to God um, doing drugs on the other hand that was a different story but um, so uh, about a year later uh, there was this new girl in school I befriended her and she became very close to me she's actually we're so close to this day but she basically had given she she had told me that her doors were always open and if I needed a place to stay I, I, I could go there and I, I believe she she knew that something was going on at my home but I anyways I took that invitation and I and I ran with it I moved in with her um, she was God sent she was the answer to my prayers as now I was waking up to a different family away from the abuse but anyhow uh, I graduated life went on um, I still kept a, a relationship with God um, I didn't go to church I mean I, I I went to church but not on on a regular basis I whenever I had the chance to talk to some somebody with to talk to somebody about God I would I would share my faith with them but um, I I was always one foot in and one foot out I um, 
my use of drugs and the distractions that this world has to offer basically kept me basically that was the reason why I never fully committed myself to him well all of that changed when I started having dreams about uh, the rapture which I talked about in my first video but I talked about two of them the first one that I had and then the one that made me recommit my, my myself to to God but I had a whole bunch of other ones uh, around that time but that I didn't talk about but yeah that those dreams came at me with the full force like they came at me hard but um, so I I basically I had to make that decision to wake up I mean I, I, I woke up and 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 no more one foot in and, and one foot out I was all in I am all in but so now there may be some of you that have been abused that was abused as a child there might be some of you that have practiced the occult or was exposed to it at, at some point in your life and there might be some people right now that are under the influence of drugs or or alcohol while watching this video but I want every single person to know that you are loved no matter what you've gone through no matter what you've done no matter what has happened in your life no matter how dark it's been in your life no matter how blemished it's been there is a God and, and he he loves you and I I turned my back on him and not knowing that he was in the process of answering my prayers not knowing that he was making a way and I turned my back on him and what did he do he he still answered my prayers he is a God that hears our cries and and answers prayers um, and in turning my back, I basically allowed an entity to attach itself to me. And, and, and what happened? What, what happened? Uh, the church prayed for me and I was delivered. I was set free. You guys, he has given us authority over unclean spirits. Um, and during a very dark time in my life when I was being forced to do something that I didn't want to do what happened he he showed me his son on that cross during that dark time he was showing me how much he loved me for God so loved the world right you know you hear a lot of preachers say they say Jesus thought about you when he was up on that cross but that statement my friends I know it to be true and you should too um, throughout my life I've experienced his unconditional love throughout my life I've experienced his faithfulness and throughout my life I've also experienced the power of the Holy Spirit throughout my life and I am a living testimony to that um, if you feel that my testimony can benefit others please share it um, I left a little poem in the description box um, I love you guys God bless